Hey guys, Christina here. I am a homeschooling mom to five children on the Canadian Maritimes. And today I wanna to share with you five easy make ahead breakfast ideas. We eat these in rotation and it saves so much time in the morning. I'm gonna share three that I do in big batches, like six to eight weeks worth at a time, and two that can be done the night before. So let's start. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with bagels. This is a cinnamon raisin bagel recipe that I have used for many years. It is from Sally's Baking Addiction. Um, this has changed over time. I make them a little bit bigger than that now because my kids are older. But I'm gonna go ahead and make two batches of these and then I'm just gonna alter it slightly and make two batches of everything bagel, but basing it off the same recipe. So we'll have four batches of bagels all together. Here's the end result. I counted and then I forgot. I think there was 52 because my husband doesn't always eat one and I figured there was with eight weeks for the kids and myself plus the occasional one for him. So eight weeks of bagels, they will just cool down then I'll portion them and put them in the freezer and we just pull them out the night before and they are good to go. Just toasted with some butter or cream cheese or some jam. Super quick breakfast in the morning. So the next breakfast I'm gonna show you is just the most simple thing, but it is fantastic because you wake up to a nice hot breakfast. And that is oats. And I have steel cut oats cooked in the Instant Pot. Now when I had a slow cooker, I used to just put it on the keep warm setting and that worked great. I don't have a slow cooker anymore, so I just use this. So for my family of, usually six of us eat this. I find that I need about a cup and a half of oats, sometimes just a little bit more. So I'm gonna put just over a cup and a half. Sometimes we go ahead and cook apples in here or raisins, but most of the time my kids enjoy it just plain and they add whatever they want the next morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and add about eight to nine cups of water and then get it set for the morning. So I'm setting it for 12 minutes on pressure cook with a manual release or a do not keep warm. I'm also doing a delayed start so that it will automatically start in the night and in the morning when we wake up, this is what it looks like. This is all my kids left me, <laughs> they got to it before me, but it gives you an idea of the texture and what it looks like ready to eat. I like to add peanut butter, honey, and cocoa to mine. Some of my kids like to add nuts, raisins, mixed berries, uh, fresh apple, whatever they care to add. So next up is I'm gonna make pancakes. I always put bananas in my pancakes. I have some that thawed overnight because we had a bunch in the freezer. I just find it gives them a really nice texture. They don't have to be pre-frozen. You can just use whatever you have, but it makes them extra fluffy. I also like to use almond milk in my recipes instead of milk. Again, just makes them nice and fluffy. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do them. I like to put blueberries in mine as well. So blueberry banana pancakes. I'm gonna show you how I do them on the griddle and how I do them in the oven because doing them in the oven is the quickest way to get lots of pancakes made, portioned up and in the freezer, and then we just pull them out the night before. So for this recipe, I'm using a homemade pancake mix. It's actually a mixture of kind of a healthier recipe and a just traditional or not so healthy one. Typically I would add a bit of protein powder in here, but I don't have any on this day. And you can totally do this with the pre-mixed pancake mix from Costco. I have done that before. I'm going to go ahead and use my blender. I find that's the way to get it the smoothest texture, especially when you're blending those oats up. And I can only do one 
batch at a time in my blender. I have made that mistake multiple times where I've tried to do two and then all of a sudden it makes a huge mess. It ends up coming out everywhere and just it's a total disaster. So you're going to see me blend it, put it on the pan, and then I just do the same thing to make a second batch to fill that large pan. Then I just sprinkle blueberries in there and it's all ready to go in the oven and it's going to cook up nice and quick and simple and easy pancakes. So here's what it looks like as it's about to go into the oven. I can't remember the exact size of these pans, but they are big. They take up most of the rack. I just bake it at 375 until the top looks dry and sometimes it starts to crack a little bit. Then I know it's done, maybe 20 minutes or so, but just kind of keep an eye on it. When it comes out and it's cooled down, I find a pizza cutter is the easiest way to just cut it up and then it's ready to serve and it is absolutely delicious and fluffy and everyone loves it. Then the other way that you can meal prep this is to do the traditional pancake, like the circle shape, on a griddle. I just added some blueberries, flip it over, and then let it cool. I actually burnt that first one. Oops. <laughs> but then I just portion them into bags, and one bag is a meal for our family, and they're ready to go into the freezer and be ready to pull out the night before. I ended up doing six batches. And that gave us enough for one, two, three, four, five with me having breakfast and the six week without me having it. We also had these for lunch. So normally there would be at least seven, sometimes up to eight weeks, depending how much I make. You can see these ones store a lot better. They're easier to just pull out. You can pop them in the microwave. These ones are a little bit more crumbly, but they're quicker to make. So two different options for you. I'm gonna go add these to my freezer now. So the next thing I'm going to make is waffles. These are so easy to put in the freezer. You just pull them out, put them in your toaster, and they are ready to go right from frozen. These are whole wheat and honey waffles. I'm going to do a double batch, and I'll see how much that makes. I'll probably do that twice to stock our freezer up. This is a recipe that is adjusted from one from hopefully.com. I've been making it for many, many years, and it is a delicious recipe. Here's what they look like. I ended up doing four batches, which will give me about three months worth. I just portion them, put them in the freezer in these bags, and we just pull them straight from frozen into the toaster and breakfast is ready. Some of the kids like peanut butter on them, some like jam, some like syrup, apple butter in, this, in the fall time. Easy peasy. So the last breakfast that I have to share with you today is called Berry Oat Cobbler. This is a recipe based on one from Ellen Fisher that I've just simplified over the years. I layer dates, oats, and unsweetened coconut, pulse it, then blend it in my blender. It's actually really delicious to eat just like this, but I put it away for the night, get some berries out on the counter, and let them thaw from the freezer overnight. And so when the kids get up, they're all ready to make their dishes. There's some berries with some delicious juice. There's this topping that is sweet and filling, and they love it. And it's super simple, it's quick, it's easy. Breakfast is taken care of, thanks to some prep work the night before, and it's ready to go. I hope that's given you some ideas for quick, simple meals you can make ahead of time the night before, a weekend, two, three, four, ahead of time to help you save time in the mornings. If you have any other breakfasts that you like to make ahead, leave them in the comment section down below. And otherwise, I hope this finds you having a great day. Take care.